Can you all hear me? Um, let's just wait for another minute. Um, it was announced uh, quite. Sh um, it was quite a short announcement. So uh, let's wait for another minute uh, to see if there's more people joining, and then uh, we'll pre proceed the call shortly. Uh, uh, oh, okay, the Alan. Sorry, Alan. So I'm glad that you joined. I just want just avoid to send you a short uh, link, but uh, I can see you are connected. Sorry for the problem. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, just read email on a different computer from Webex, so I have to type. Understood. Sorry for that. Okay, um, thank you so much everyone for joining the call in very, very short notice. Um, so um, before I start, I would like to first just confirm with everyone if we would like to make this call an official first call or just to make it more like an um, information sharing uh, session where we don't make new decisions and we position this call as just uh, clarifying our understanding. Um, and so I would like to all uh, confirm people's preference. And then if we decide to make this an official Christine call, um, I, I would propose we we do need to make the announcement to the um, the IANA Global List uh, before we, we start. So it's, uh, we may have to wait maybe a little bit, um, maybe 10 minutes or so until we officially start. So um, my current preference is that we don't make this an official Christine call. Um, and the purpose of this call is simply um, to make sure that Christine members share a common understanding. It's just a, an informal clarification call, and we don't make new decisions about a certain issue or the next steps. Um, so do people have any comments about this um, suggestion? Um, so I'm not seeing any concerns over this approach. So um, 
So just to redefine and be clear, this is an informal call. So we don't need notes, and it's just uh, the purpose is to make sure we all have the same understanding to um, to develop the draft. So um, um Zoom, think, there, there are three hands oh, up. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I have to check the chat. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry about this. So, um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. Uh, uh, I think uh, it makes sense to have an informal call uh, now. My question is, uh, I assume that we'll still archive the recording of this session and make it public. I don't have an issue about that. Um, I, I'm fine with uh, providing an archive and just clarifying that this was an informal call and we didn't make any decision. So that's why we didn't announce this uh, in advance. Thank I'm you. fine with that approach. Um, Alan? Right. Um, so I have mixed feelings about this. Um, we intend not to make formal decisions, but we can't predict how the meeting might go. We might end up making some kind of decision. And uh, because of that risk, I would prefer it if we announced the call to the, the IANA transfer list and allowed people to join, um, and we should definitely make the recordings available. But I don't think we need to wait. So I think we could announce that it was a, a meeting organized at very short notice, and um, but at least announce it. Noted. Thanks, Alan. Um, and the running? I must say, um, even though I was the one who proposed it, I do have very mixed feelings about it as well. And, and uh, I think it's very important that it's publicly uh, recorded. And I think um, I'm actually supportive of Alan's uh, uh, position that even if it's last minute, uh, we should announce it. Um, our mandate is clearly... Um, it is clearly in our mandate to, to con it states clearly that we should conduct these on, on public uh, telephone conferences. And we have consistently said that people can listen in. Um, so, yes, I think we, we should be, we should announce this, even if it's an informal call. We can call it an informal call, but still keep it open. Thank you, Nirani. I think um, your point um, and Alan's point does make sense. So uh, let's make an announcement and um, at least allow opportunity for people to um, to join. Um, and and then uh, we try not to make decisions. And we but um, so that that would be um, the target. But um, let's still make it um, make an announcement. So um, I'm sorry for creating. Um, on a lot of uh, unexpected work for you, Herman, but uh, would NRO Secretariat uh, help us make an announcement to um, the globalist? Yeah, yes, of course, no no problem. Um, what is the, uh, the, direct, the direction I need to follow here? Should I call it an um, informal meeting or um, I would like to have some kind of uh, direction on that in that regard? Okay, um, so my preference is to uh, call it an informal meeting uh, if nobody has any object objections or concerns about this. Um, so Alan is saying okay. And I'm not, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm Andre. I, I, I wouldn't know what informal implies here. Uh, so maybe we should avoid saying in, informal, but understand that it's a very short notice meeting to clarify uh, some of the issues for the uh, final release of the second version of the draft. Uh, so I would suggest avo avoiding uh, term informal, but just say what it is. It's a short short notice meeting to clarify last 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 minute uh, editorial issues with the draft. Understood. So the idea is that we would actually, not, we've been numbering the call, so I think this call would be numbered as a 10th call, and it would just explain the purpose, and it was last minute, and then so we don't make it uh, sound something uh, something irregular. So I think that works for me as well, and I'm seeing um, Nirani agreeing with this. So. Um, 
would that uh, clarify what um, things for you, Haman? Yes, yes, I can send something around uh, those lines. Thank you, Haman. So, um, so while Haman is uh, preparing the announcement, um, let's um, let's confirm on um, what we would like to um, discuss today. So, uh, my understanding of the call today is. There are a couple of issues that's being um, text, um, some differences in um, understanding of the text suggestion, and then uh, we would like to make sure that um, we have, we all agree on the direction. So, um, what I would like to suggest we do is um, perhaps Michael to list all the points that he has recognized as being resolved, and he has some. Um, already incorporated or planning to incorporate in the text, and then the points that um, he is um, observing as unresolved, and then um, confirm if there's any other points that um, the members of the Chris team would like to clarify. Um, would that make sense to everybody to um, discuss at the call today? Yes, I agree. I think Michael should lead. So, um, if there's no other suggestion about what to discuss, um, may I have Michael to um, explain and give us the update? Thank you, Izumi. Um, so, I've been trying to comb through all of the uh, emails that have been coming through, I guess, in the past few hours since I circulated the draft. And um, I just circulated to the Chris team an email that has at least um, a good chunk, if not all, of what I've uh, incorporated in terms of edits, or at least what I feel are um, resolved issues. And then there's also just the um, maybe two issues that seem to be unresolved. So uh, if I just look to that email that I just sent, um, I'm sorry, let me pull that up. So kind of going along with the most recent comments that have been coming in, um, you know, I made changes to 1C with the inadder.arpa and ip6.arpa um, language. Uh, there was, I guess, um, I saw an email that Narani had sent with some other comments that I just uh, responded to as well. So that may... Uh, resolve the question I had with 1C about a change to the description of services provided by the ANA operator that's in the uh, uh, principles section, the SLA principles. There was also uh, revisions to section 2B2, and that was language that had been proposed um, specifying ICANN's uh, historical role in providing Diana service. Um, section 3A3, there was the contract and SLA language that I removed the word contract and um, just to keep it uh, with clarity. And I know that that was an agreed upon uh, modification as well. Um, in that same section, there was changing the following principles to principles listed below. So these are some just minor editorial changes. Um, 3A3 was the one that I understand uh, with the text regarding the no concrete needs or plans at this point, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that was the one that I know had gotten a little bit of discussion back and forth, but I believe that I've captured what the final resolution to that was, which was including that sentence, um, moving it to 3A3 right before the uh, principal section. Um, same thing, we have 3A3-2. That was the description of the services um, and that was a bit of a modification, so I, I did that as well. Um, under 5E, that was uh, Narani's suggestion that there be clarification about the proposal does not replace, and um, I added the rest of that language in there as well. Uh, under Section 6, there were regional uh, process formatting updates, so I did that so far to the red line. I need to confirm that those are reflected in the clean version. But um, those were kind of the, the setup, you know, being split to two words, taking out hard breaks. Uh, the one more substantive thing that I did was I removed the timeline graphic 
And the text immediately below seemed to track the timeline graphic, but I um, put a little bit of additional detail in there with the specific time duration references. Um, so, so far, those are the ones that I noticed seem to be resolved. There was one other thing that I've just been working on last second, uh, which was inclusion, inclusion of the maintenance of global internet number resource registries at the top in section 1A. Um, I've already done that, and I just did that after sending out this email. So right now, I think the open items that I've seen, and I would uh, welcome anybody to raise anything, one, if I've missed uh, missed that, um, is there's, I guess, some comment about the review committee text, and I wasn't sure if there's any modification that needs to be made to the current text as it is right now. Um, and then I know that there was something that Paul had suggested. I had planned on removing it, hadn't done so yet, but just wanted to confirm. There was the comment about jurisdiction um, and that being dependent on the IN operator, but um, I can remove that as well, but I didn't know if that had been resolved because I didn't see any comments on that. And I see, Alan, did you have a question on 3A3? Uh, yes. Um, could you confirm how much of that paragraph has moved? Um, your email talks about, mentions the first sentence, I think, while there's no concrete need at this point, etc., uh, it may in future be transferred to a different contractor. Um, then there's another sentence that says, that talks about selection of a new contractor shall be fair and open and transparent and um, associated RFPs, responses, and the contract shall be published. Has that text been removed, or, or did it get transferred to the other section? Um, that's, I believe that sentence um, had been agreed to be removed, but I can put that in if that was not the resolution. I knew that there was a section with two sentences, and the last comment that I had seen was deletion of the second sentence and then moving that first sentence up to what um, what I've referenced. But if there's any um, comment on that, I can go back and reinsert that, that sentence, or if anybody has any um, issues with that, please, I welcome the comment. Okay. Um, I think Paul did suggest to delete that sentence, um, but I'm not sure if there was agreement about that. Um, the sentence, I think, was added in response to a, a comment from the community about openness of selection. So I'm, I think we need to make a decision about what to do there. Does anybody else have any comments on, on that item, on whether it needs to remain out? I'm happy to put it back in, actually. Um, I can look at the language again. I didn't have any objection to including that piece, but, um, but I welcome anybody else's comments. Um, Alan, I just want to be clear with exactly um sentence that you're talking about. Is it the one that was initially at the um the last uh, paragraph of A3, and then there have been some suggestions to move to another section, and I think you initially suggested to remove it. Um, is this the sentence that you're talking about that uh, talks about the um, openness of the selection? Uh, yes, Izumi, that is the sentence we're talking about. Uh, there are two sentences in this paragraph. Uh, the first sentence says, while there are no concrete needs or plans at this point, the NROEC may in the future determine that the INA functions, etc., should be transferred to a different contractor. That first sentence, I understand, has been moved. In the second sentence, which I understand has been deleted, used to say, in such a case, selection of a new contractor shall be conducted in a fair, open, and transparent process, etc. Uh, so I'm fine with deleting it. Um, um, I see Nurani's hand up, so um, maybe I, I do have a comment about this, but uh, perhaps Nurani can comment first. Uh, thank you. I'll just try to, to explain how I interpret it. It's a little bit hard since I think it was Paul who suggested to remove it and uh, he's, he's not on the call. Uh, but um, 
I suspect, or I guess that the the reason to remove that is that it's uh, it actually um, implies public procurement, and that's uh, a restriction that I don't think Chris wants to apply. Um, so that's how I interpret the the removal of that, and I I think uh, I'm in favour of the removal of that too, but I'm also unsure as to if we should make that decision on this call or or uh, take that back to the list, as in not the public list, uh, the global list right now, but, but as in the Chris list, which is publicly archived. Darcy Allen. Okay, I uh, thank you for that explanation, Nurani. I think I agree with you that it uh, would put a restriction on what we do in the future that we don't necessarily want. And so because of that, I'm also in favor of removal of this sentence. However, we should check whether there was a community request for this clause. And if there was, then we need to ensure that our response to the community explains why we removed it or why we did not add what they suggested. Thank you, Alan. Um, this was exactly the point that I wanted to cover. I think this was uh, based on Andrew Dow's request um, to incorporate this point as the, the basic principle. And then um, the process that we went through was that uh, we actually um, confirmed um, to the mailing list whether people were happy about incorporating these, uh, these points. And there was no um, concerns or objections observed. So I think this is, that's why that um, we have it here. And um, I think in the past we, we did discuss uh, whether we are uncomfortable with uh, adding these uh, principles. But we can certainly uh, re-look at this and um, uh, ch change what we actually um, initially agreed. But I think um, to clarify the process, I think that was what we did. Um, Andre, did you have a uh, comment? Yeah, I just have one comment, and that's probably my own confusion. And unfortunately, Paul cannot confirm, so I have the same difficulty as Narani had. I'm just reading through emails, and I think Paul's suggestion was just to remove the last sentence, not the sentence about the openness of the process. So I think he suggested to leave in such a case, selection of a new contractor should be conducted in a fair, open, transparent process in line with applicable industry best practices and standards. But he suggested to remove a more detailed statement, which is indeed a constraint, associated requests for proposals, responses, and contract itself shall be published. Understood. Thank you for this clarification. I think. Um, um, I think that's really helpful because this part I don't recall that there's been any um, community suggestion related to this. Um, uh, but, but I think we, we, we might want to double check um, with the comments from um, with the issues list. And, and Andre, I think that you, you brought up a good point because uh, I think we may have just melded those two sentences into one. Um, and you may be right that it is just that last piece that was a little bit more detailed about an item being published. Um, but we can we can reinsert that unless there is some, some discussion here that says we should not put that open and transparent part in there. Thank you, Jimmy. I, I have the mail that, because you, you sought specific um, input on, on this mail, and I know that I responded to it, and I found the mail here. So basically, I can read it out, uh, what Andrew Dull suggested. The review report will be publicly disclosed. The review committee selection and process conducted in an open and transparent manner. If the NROEC determines that a change is needed with the IANA numbers functions contract, the RFP for a new contractor will be conducted in a fair, open and transparent process in line with applicable industry best practices and standards. So 
I feel that the text, the paragraph that we have, except for that last restricted, restrictive um, sentence, actually meets this uh, need that was um, brought up on the global list. Thank you. Thank you, Rani, for this um, clarification. So I think that I, that my, uh, I also don't have an issue, and um, I do interpret that this is this deleting the very last sentence would not uh, conflict with the suggestion made from Andrew Zhou. But I see Alan has a different interpretation that he reads Paul's rec comment as referring to both sentences. So um, maybe we should confirm what Paul exactly said and um, confirm his with his email and uh, see how it, it's a little bit difficult in not having Paul here actually, but uh. Uh, yes, um, what I said on the chat, um, I had intended that Alan. to to be in the past tense. I I had previously read Paul's comment as referring to both sentences, but but now perhaps he he did strictly mean the first, the last sentence and. Um, so, so I think that the dis if we don't have time to get back to Paul, I'm not sure, then, then we can keep the second sentence which says selection will be conducted in a fair and open and transparent process, but delete the third sentence which says RFP's responses and the contract shall be published. So I, I think that's think the consensus we're way. coming to. Agreed. So, um, does anybody else have any comments? So, Michael is expressing support, and so the suggestion is simply to remove um, the the very last sentence that Alan has just read out. Yep, support from Andre as well. And Ryan. Okay, so I think we have actually um, addressed um, how we we handle this case, and so we will move on um, to section three a one. Oh no no no! I think the latest. Uh, um, I think there was a suggestion to move this to section three a one, and there's another suggestion um, to move to section three a three. I don't have a strong preference. Um, so if we simply stick to Paul's suggestion, uh, the suggestion is to move this to section 3A1. Move it to the last paragraph. Is everybody happy with this? I'm not seeing any hands. So, um, so let's move this to section 3A1. It's a clear agreement from the line. So thank you. And just for clarification, are we putting that at the end of 3A1 as just a kind of an end to that right before 3A2? Is that everyone's understanding? That's what Paul seems to be suggesting and makes sense to me, and we would like to hear from others. And so, Alan, it's end of 3A1 is fine, yes. Okay. So, um, if nobody else have other comments, then uh, let's move this to the end of three A one, the last uh, paragraph. Okay. And um, Michael, um, I would like to confirm the next issue that you would like to confirm our position. Is it the review committee part? Yes, that's that's correct, Zumi. I was uh, I was curious on to if we needed to make any changes or if anybody had any comments on the review committee section as it is drafted now, and if there were any additional edits or if um, I had failed to capture anybody's uh, suggestions there. So, does anybody have any uh, thoughts on that that piece? I guess Alan, you have one. Uh, Right, so this is, seems to me the most contentious issue we're facing right now. Um, 
I had drafted an update of the review committee section a few days ago uh, in response to community comments and what we discussed on the calls. Um, but then Paul was surprised to see it there because it, it wasn't in the draft of Section 3 that he'd been sending around. Um, it's a pity that Paul's not on the call, but uh, perhaps somebody else from the RIPE region will be able to help uh, explain Paul's concerns. Um, I did send email about maybe half an hour ago proposing a compromise to delete the part about the frequency of reviews and to delete the entire paragraph about the composition of the review committee, but to keep some of my other edits about openness of the process and uh, some editorial changes to, to make things easier to understand. So I, I'd like to get, know whether people have seen my email message and uh, what they think we should do. And um, just as a quick background to this, um, I think Narani had made, sent an email before uh, commenting that this may have been just a kind of um, joining of two different uh, two different drafts, and that is actually what happened last night as I was uh, drafting this section. I saw comments from two sides. So, um, so perhaps Narani, if you'd like to to elaborate on this part as well, and your thoughts. Yes, indeed. Um, I, I actually think that what Alan just said uh, is, is a, well, Michael described the situation well, and, and I think what, what Alan uh, suggested is perfectly fine. I think the reason the details about the selection of representatives, etc., uh, was not in there was because of the call we had yesterday where we talked about leaving those details out and, and uh, focusing on the high-level principles. That, that was our interpretation of it. That's why um, that was not in there. Uh, and I, I think that your rather suggestions uh, are perfectly fine, Alan. Um, I would. I, I don't think there is an issue here. I just want to make sure that we read the one text uh, to make sure that it's internally consistent. Um, and that it, it's intelligible. Um, so I just want to get the chance to do that, but I think that the, the I have no issues at all with the, the um, uh, suggested text uh, that from Alan, thanks. And Alan, do you have a, a response to that? I uh, Yes, thanks. Um, Thank you, Narani, but I'm still a little unsure which text you're talking about when you say you have no issues with it. Is that the text that I sent an email just recently, or is that the text in the PDF that Michael sent a few hours ago? Um, so, so, yeah, can I get an answer to that first, and then I have further comments? Uh, certainly, I'm talking about your, your most recent, the text that you provided, the most recent email, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, all right, and then I think a, a possible reason for the misunderstanding was uh, in the call yesterday, we talked about leaving the details to each RIR, and uh, I had thought that we meant leaving the, leaving the details of how they would select the members to each RIR, but it seems that you and Paul thought that we would also leave the number of members to, to future discussion. So I think that's the underlying reason for the difference, and I'm happy to remove all that text as I proposed in the email about the number of members and saying that they'll be selected in a way similar to the, the NRONC process. Certainly, and, and I think, I, I, I agree, I think that's uh, exactly what happened. Uh, and personally, I don't have a, a huge issue uh, with that. It was just simply our interpretation of, of uh, um, of the call, um, and then trying to go with the, the high-level principle. So, um, yeah, so thanks for that, Alan. Okay, so can we agree then to go with the text that I sent in my email message um, less than an hour ago? 
that was actually going to be my question as well, is that, uh, you know, I see the text that you proposed. It seems that um, at least uh, Narani and yourself are in agreement. So if anybody else, if nobody else has an opposition to that, I can incorporate that text as the revised language. So does anybody have any objection? It looks like we don't have any objection from anybody. And I see, uh, I see Andre is is fine with the last text as well. Okay. Okay. I uh, thank you everybody for helping us uh, resolve this issue. So, uh, Michael, if you'll take the text from my email message sent at 12:44 UTC, 14:44 South African time, um, then I think that's it. Absolutely. Um, I have that I have that text in front of me, so I'll make sure that's incorporated into the uh, into the next updated draft. Um, so, is is there any other um, item that I have not covered? Well, I guess the one thing I did have was the removal of the jurisdiction text that Paul had uh, suggested. Did anybody have any um, objection to doing so? Okay, and, and hearing no no objection, then uh, um, I'll make sure that that edit is reflected as well. Oh, let me um, let me refer that text real quick. Just give me a second. I'm trying to locate where that one is. Thank you, Andre. That is that is the the text that he was suggesting uh, removing. Jurisdiction will be dependent on the chosen IANA functions operator. Um, I'm trying to find the actual section that that was located in. But I I personally don't have any um, issue with removing that that item. Does anybody have uh, a question about that or or have any thoughts? Okay, I see uh, Alan, Andre, and Izumi all agreeing to remove. So, um, so I'll move forward with removing that in this text. And thank you, Narani, as well. All right. Um, from w what it seems right now, it looks like any of the open items or any unresolved items have been have been addressed. And I can uh, make these changes in short order. I know that there are. Just a bunch of formatting and, and editorial items, which we can um, we can try to I guess do after the publication of the second draft. I'll try to do as much as I can before um, sending this one out. But I know that um, I probably won't be able to get to every every detail on this before we actually get this out. But um, the main concern I have is does anybody have any items that they think I may have left out, or if anybody has anything that um, they'd like to raise at this time, or have any objection? And not hearing any, then um, I think I can move forward with with what we have. Izumi, I can turn it back over to you if there's anything else that you needed to uh, to discuss. Thank you, Michael, and thank you all for. And I think it was great that we had a call and we agreed on this um, this unresolved issue. So um, I just want to confirm the next steps and and the timeline. Um, so I'd like to first confirm with Michael when this uh, text. So uh, you can um, uh, send this uh, text, how, how much time you need, and then uh, maybe we can give it um, another, for example, um, one hour or two hours, or um, I would like to hear your feedback about how much time you need to recheck the text, and then um, have it published. So first, I'd like to confirm with Michael, um, when do you think you would be able to send us the draft? I'm um, seeing that a lot of these uh, items have been resolved. I think that um, I can circulate once we get off the call within 30 to 45 minutes, if not sooner than that. It might actually be sooner than that, but just to be sure, I would say 
30 to 45 minutes and um, I can circulate both the clean and the red line okay. version. So um, maybe give it um, for 45 minutes, um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit confusing. So let's give it um, 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 I'll have to check the time again. Um, so, um, say, um, this UTC, yeah, I think UTC 5. Thank you, Andre. I think that's excellent. So, uh, UTC 5, and then, um, so are you suggesting that we will publish this um, at UTC 5? So, we just uh, delay it for two hours? Um, does anybody else have any comments about this? Um, I'd like to also confirm with um, Herman if you feel that we have sufficient time for publishing this um, uh, announce, uh, this draft on on the on the website. If this this gives you you know gives you enough time. Um, one yes. One hour. One hour. Yes. Yes. Uh, no problem uh, with publish, uh, publishing the. Um, the document in, in the uh, 15 UTC. Um, I will uh, wait just for you, uh, I assume, to say um, I can go ahead uh, with the last with the last version because um, we might have uh, last minute comments on uh, in the, in the, in, in this new version that will be will be sent. But uh, I can I can do it in in 15 hours, 16 hours, not no problem. UTC, okay. I meant. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. I just wonder if this gives people enough time to re or recheck on uh, Michael's draft and a uh, hand from Andre. Yeah, I think I think uh, just thinking more about that, I think since we uh, kind of missed the deadline that we set for ourselves of 1 p.m. UTC, uh, I don't think we need really to rush. So I think I probably suggested too aggressive timeline. Um, I think it's as good as uh, we can basically publish till 23:59 and be on on schedule because what we promised to the community to publish this on the 8th, right? Uh, so maybe yeah, we can be more relaxed and say, hey, uh, we aim to publish this at uh, 4 p.m. UTC or 5 p.m. UTC. Oh, okay, thank you, Andre. I agree about this uh, general observation. And um, so, 4, p 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. UTC, that would be um, how many hours from now? I, I think we, we should give enough time, but then we shouldn't be too relaxed because that would give us a shorter time to, uh, that would give the community shorter time to give feedback as well. But um, so, uh, let me confirm the time conversion. So, um, Okay, so it's now um, 13, but uh, I think that sounds quite reasonable. Um, does anybody have any comments about this suggestion? What what time, to me? So, um, uh, so uh, Andre, you, you suggested 4, 4 a.m. UTC, right? <laughs> Sorry, for 14. 14 UTC. So I'm suggesting 14 UTC, which is 4 p.m. UTC, which is two uh, hours and uh, 20 minutes from now. Two hours and 20 minutes from now sounds good. And... um. Yeah, I think that would be that sounds reasonable. So, would, if that works for her man, um, and people feel comfortable that they have enough time to recheck on, on Michael's draft, then I think um, we can target this. 
So I'm not seeing any hands or comments, so uh, let's target to publish on uh, 14 UTC. So um, I would also like to set a, a time for the comments. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Herman. So it's going to be after dinner, after the call, okay. And then I would like to also be clear on the, on the deadline for people, in case people have any further comments, then I think um, Herman, would 30 minutes be um, in fixing the draft give you enough time to, um, to upload on the website? 15? So 1 5? 13 or 15 30. Yes, yes, that's so, uh, no problem. So I, just, I suggest that we would have the, the final, we will send you the final draft at, um, Michael will send you the final draft at 15 30 yes. uh, ETC. And then, um, so um, I think it would be safe to give um, 30 minutes. Yes. Yeah, I think, sorry. Yes. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Herman. Uh, no, no, I'm just going to uh, remind uh, Michael that he's to have the word version, so I can't, uh, uh, so I can add the uh, control track uh, on the top of the document. And I think half an hour should be enough time to upload the document and review and we check any uh, link that uh, will be created uh, with this announcement. Okay. Thank you, Herman, for uh, clarifying. So, um, so I would like to close comments um, from on Michael's draft. He'll be sharing at um, 13 um, UTC. So that if Michael needs to incorporate any comments, then he will do that um, within the within 30 minutes. So it's between uh, 15 UTC and 15:30 um, UTC, and Michael will send the draft to um, a man at 15:30 UTC. So if um, that works for everybody, uh, let's confirm that as the um, next step. And um, thank you very much for joining the call. And then I would like to confirm the next call. Uh, we will conduct the next call at uh, 9, um, so tomorrow on the same time at 10 o'clock, or 10, uh, 13 UTC. Um, and um, I would like to... Um, close the meeting unless anybody have any um, anything that you would like to uh, raise. Um, actually, I would like to flag at one, one point. I actually made a comment on, on the email that um, I, I did get the impression that um, the new proposal has a, a lot of um, has a lot of um, details added and I, I wasn't sure um, Um, I wasn't sure if this really clearly explains the essence of our proposal. The first draft was like it was quite compact, so I think people were able to understand um, the essence of the proposal. So it might be worth rechecking if this uh, current draft clearly understands it. Um, and but maybe this is something that uh, we should uh, discuss um, um, online um, after I, I send more specific uh, idea and suggestion rather than we discuss it here. And I think it would be better to just uh, simply focus on incorporating uh, the text suggestions that have been already been made. So um, if everybody is okay about this, then uh, let's close the call and uh, talk to you again uh, at Nine uh, on, on nine, and then uh, let's get engaged. Um, uh, keep engaged online. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.